Product Manager getting paid the second highest in the tech industry. It's only 10% lower than the software developer salary. And the best part is you don't need to code and sit in computers all day long, but making strategic decisions as a product manager getting paid extremely high salary. So this is best career ever for everybody. But people frequently ask, how much does a product manager make? What's a product manager's salary from entry level all the way to direct level? So it's actually between $100,000 per year up to millions of dollars per year. So of course, take you a really long time to reach million dollars per year as a director or VP of product. In this video, I'm gonna give you the detailed breakdown and how much I'm getting paid as a product manager and my salary progression from 2009 all the way to 2017 and with no future. And I also know hundreds of people's salary because I negotiate salary for my students. So in this video, I'm gonna give you so many real life examples of product manager salary in all levels. Stay until the end of this video where I share with you the secret to the fast growth of your income and personal happiness. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director product featured in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we talk about tech trends and the free product management training. Like and subscribe and check out our new video every Tuesday. First of all, I totally regret that I didn't start product management journey until my late 20s. If I have started way earlier, I could already make so much money in a younger age. Just like many of people who join tech companies as a PM, the first job ever out of college, they're already making so much more money compared with other people. However, it's too late to regret. So let me share with you my salary growth from 2009 all the way right now. I moved to the US in 2009 as a PhD student and with only $800 in my pocket. Then as a PhD student, I was getting paid at $1,400 per month in 2009. I was so happy at the time. I was like, oh, looks like I don't need to pay taxes. But in reality, it was because I was significantly underpaid. So as a PhD student, we're getting PhD stipends to do research that equals to $17,000 per year as annual income because the salary is so low, I don't need to pay taxes. That's not a good thing, actually. Having very low income beginning of my career and give me really good money spending habit. For example, I was very frugal. I never went to a restaurant when I was a PhD student and I live in the smallest apartment you ever find in Boston and I only pay $600 in rent so that I have a few hundred dollars left to reinvest in myself. Then, a few years later, I became one of the youngest engineering PhD. That was in 2013. I graduated from Boston University and all of a sudden, I started to make real money. And I became a systems engineer at Shell Oil in 2017. And at the time, people were still recovering from recession. And I was just trying to get any job I can ever get who can sponsor my H1B. So that job actually paid me $90,000 per year as a base salary and also 10% bonuses that equals to $99,000 per year in terms of total compensation. And because I didn't know how to negotiate, I didn't ask for any sign on bonuses. So that's a tip for everybody. You must negotiate your salary regardless of the economical situation. I actually have a video about salary negotiation. Check out right here. But one year into my new job, I discovered that I was underpaid and my male co-workers they were getting paid at least one hundred thousand dollars per year as a base salary but at the time because i need h1b sponsorship i'm no confidence so i didn't know how to really stand up for myself so i just stuck my head continue getting underpaid that was the worst thing i've ever done that's so stupid but later on after I started to learn product management knowledge and build my confidence, and then I landed my first product manager job with no PM experience. That was so exciting. And all of a sudden, I was getting paid at $130,000 per year as a base salary and 20% bonuses and plus 5K sign-on bonus. So that equals to $160,000 per year for the first year total compensation. That was with Verizon in the Boston office in 2016. And at the time, I was so happy. Wow, my salary literally went up by 60% for total compensation. I was like, just blew my mind. I strongly encourage everybody to switch into product management. You can immediately get a salary bump right away. 
And there is something important I want to point out for my compensation during that time. That was actually for big tier two company on the East Coast. If in 2016 you land the same type of job on the West Coast in Silicon Valley, you suddenly go up by 30% naturally because this is like national standard. People on the West Coast getting paid higher than people on the East Coast, 30% higher. So which means that in 2016, if I had land the same type of job offer in large tier two companies on the West Coast, I would be getting paid around $200,000 per year in terms of total compensation. Now, if you're also asking how much you should be getting paid right now with the same kind of years of experience like me, and you should also add another 10% inflation because 2016 to right now, the inflation is already at least 10%. So let's make a conservative number. So 10% inflation uh, and in Silicon Valley, you are getting paid at least $220,000 per year for total compensation just for tier two companies with, for entry level PM position as well. Of course, not everybody getting paid as much for the very first PM job. You must learn how to negotiate your salary and package your past experience to make people appreciate your background much more. I made so many more videos about how to make the transition. You can watch videos about nine steps to become PM right here. Now let's talk about fan companies. If you land a job offer in the Bay Area in fan companies, you're getting paid at least $300,000 per year with the same amount of years experience that I had in 2016. In reality, in order to hit $300,000 per year salary, you don't need to only work for fan company. You can join some sexy startups and other tier one companies as well. For example, I many students join TikTok right now and they're getting over $300,000 per year. Another student might this year also joined Coinbase competitor as a crypto trading company and she's getting paid over $400,000 per year. So therefore, if you really want to maximize your salary, open up your vision beyond fan companies, but look into those sexy tier one companies as well. By the way, the above salary I share with you is not senior PM title in those sexy companies. Those are just product manager title in those tier one companies or sexy uh, unicorn startups as well. So if you are a senior PM, you're getting paid even more. If you find this video very insightful so far, make sure to give it a like and continue to all the salary insight in next step. Now let's continue to talk about group product manager. In 2018, I became a group product manager in Verizon within the same company. So my salary only went up by a little bit because it's an internal promotion. So my new salary is $164,000 per year as a base and plus 20% commission that round up to be $200,000 per year in terms of total compensation. Again, if you are holding the same type of position with the same years experience as I had and became a group product manager, you are able to receive $250,000 per year to $300,000 per year for tier two companies on the West Coast. If you join tier one companies or fan company, become a group product manager, it's very likely you're gonna hit half a million dollars per year for sure. If you join Google as a group product manager, it's going to be even higher, like $800,000 per year for sure. And I have a cheat sheet that breaks down years of experience and based on the location and tiers of companies, you can go to the link in the description to download the cheat sheet and use it to evaluate your own compensation as well. Now let's talk about the director salary. In 2020, I finally became a director by jumping to a new company. Once I became a director, my compensation increased significantly. It's a director position on the East Coast again. So the base salary is $205,000 per year plus 45% annual bonuses. And on top of that, I'm also uh, getting $27,000 in terms of sign-on bonus that add up to be $327,000 per year for the first year total compensation. And I didn't include the long-term incentives. So long-term incentive means these East Coast companies also give directors a certain amount of cash every year if you stay in the company for a longer period of time. It's like, it's very similar to startup. There's a vesting period but you have to stay there for long enough and all of a sudden they start to give you a lot more money for long-term incentives as well the total compensation i just gave you didn't include the long-term incentives because i didn't stay in the company like for that long 
to qualify for the long-term incentives. But if I stayed, it will be another $50,000 per year for long-term incentives. That will bring up to $377,000 per year for East Coast company. And if you hold the same type of position for the same size of company on the West Coast, I guarantee you as a director, you're getting paid at least half million dollars per year for non-fan companies. Of course, if you join fan companies as a director, your salary will be above $1 million for sure. For example, how do I know this? I have a student who joined Meta and he's not even a director. He's a Meta L7 and his salary is $800,000 per year as an individual contributor, but he already have years of experience. So he's qualified for $800,000 per year. But as a director, at least $1 million uh, is usually between $1 million, $2 million and depends on the performance of the fan company's stock. People might ask me this question, Nancy, why you gave up your $300,000 per year director job? That sounds so stupid. To be frank, that's the bonus I want to share with you guys because I personally believe that the life happiness has nothing to do with how much money you make. And actually I made a video right here talking about why I quit my director job. In short summary, it's mainly because life choice. Because I didn't know what it costs to perform as a director that pays you over $300,000 per year on the East Coast. Because I frequently working really long hours, sometimes responding to emails in, in the midnight. And I also found out I was pregnant. And at the same time, also running my coaching business, product manager, accelerator on the side. The three things going on in my life, it was really challenging and until I was about to have my son and I made a decision, which is I have to choose among two out of three things. And I decided to become a full-time coach to run product manager accelerator full-time and also become a full-time mom so that I can spend more time with my son. And I have never been happier before because this year I also started my nonprofit called PMA Kids, which means every students who are inside of our PM Accelerator program will give away one free education for teenagers from uh, underserved communities. So personally speaking, and I believe you should define your own career satisfaction, your own impact, because no matter how much money you make, if you only hold money to yourself without making a greater impact, I don't think it's a true fulfilled life, at least that's to me. So therefore, I encourage everybody to really define your true career satisfaction and your true personal happiness. Maybe the optimized solution for you is not getting paid $1 million per year, $800,000 per year, or $300,000 per year. Maybe it's a balance of multiple things in your life. So tell me what's your definition of life and career happiness and comment down below. After you know all these different kind of crazy salary information, behind scenes stories, you'll probably be asking, so where can I get started with a career path from entry level all the way to direct level to this million dollars job? And uh, make sure to watch this video where I describe the specific career path for product managers of all levels and how fast you should get promoted and what you should expect in fan companies and non-fan company as you grow up your entire career as a product manager. Make sure to download the latest product manager salary information cheat sheet in the description of this video and find out if you are underpaid or not. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PM Accelerator.io. Like and subscribe. I'm going to see you in my next video right here.